Welcome to the Northeast Arts and Culture Show. I'm Olivia Swash, bringing you interviews, sessions, performances, and sneak peeks from the cream of the crop of homegrown creatives in our region, as well as some who are just passing through. Drop us a line on Twitter and Instagram at NEAACTV or hashtag the same, and find us on Facebook by searching Northeast Arts and Culture Show. Narby Price's paintings are more than meets the eye. He painstakingly pinpoints the exact modern locations of moments throughout history and leaves a trail of hints for the viewer. We met him in Newcastle, where he works out of b and Studios. So Navi, tell us about how you got into art. Uh, well, I was always that kid at school who was good at drawing. Um, so I suppose to a certain degree, I, I kind of always thought I'd end up doing something arty. So you're generally based in the North East? The work takes me on trips around the place. Mm -hmm. uh, I show with a gallery in, in Newcastle, with Vane Gallery, uh, who are actually in this building. Um, and with, with Gallery 6 in Milan. Mm -hmm. So that's in, on Pilgrim Street? That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, in Commercial Union House. Um, and I also show with Paper Gallery in Manchester. Mm -hmm. um, I make lithographs as well as paintings with a, a studio called Hall Editions that are based in Newcastle down in uh, Lime Street Studios. Mm -hmm. So tell us about uh, your kind of artistic style in general, it's quite unique. Mm, so I'm interested in making paintings that um, whilst having a reference to, a, to the photographic kind of uh, view um, also have something going on um, on the surface of the painting more um, so they're, they're quite they're quite abstract in a way um, there are geometrical concerns with what I do um, so there's always some kind of big line that will dissect the, the painting um, in some way and there's a lot going on on the surface of the paint I try to make the, the kind of the paint work so you mean kind of the physical surface? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the paint does two things. It kind of represents something, but it also stands, um, it stands on its own as a, as stuff. <laughs> if that makes sense. And so, what about the the method, methods of research and the actual concept behind the paintings? It was a way to kind of get out of my own um, aesthetic tastes um, and to get take judgment. Um, of what I would paint out of the equation. So I decided to take on um, a method where I would find a site of some historical importance um, and that could be of a genuine historical importance or it could be something quite whimsical or, or whatever, whatever kind of piqued my interest. Uh, so I started by making um, a body of five paintings um, that were the exact geographical sites of the Jack the Ripper murders. Um, and very specifically, not the generic ones that you get when you go on a, on a Ripper tour. Uh, so in that body of work, um, to within a foot of the centre of where I pointed the camera is exactly where it was, the, the, the body was found. Um, and it took that choice out of it, so I, I found it went there, made a photograph and had to make a painting of whatever was there. So some of them worked better than others because I, yeah, I got to a particular one, the first of the series where uh, Mary Ann Nichols was killed. I was, there was nothing there, you know, it was just like, oh God, what do I do? <laughs> how, do I, how do I make a, an interesting image of that? Um, so it was kind of, it's just like a slightly masochistic thing in a way. like. Um, I could, I could make a painting of something nice, mm -hmm. or you know, a, a pleasing, a, aesthetically pleasing view. But I'm kind of, I'm more interested in uh, the challenge of getting something from potentially nothing. So, what did you do to make that kind of potentially boring part of part of ground where this body was found? What What did you do to make it? Well, I think in. Um, in very similar terms to an abstract painter, um, in when I, I think of um, when I look through the camera, as I'm filling a rectangle, so I just kind of ignored what it was, and thought, right, how do I fill this rectangle in as interesting or as engaging a way as possible, um, and that was, like I say, kind of more difficult with some than others. But um, that's the first stage of the procedure, and then during the painting process. Um, 
a whole different set of criteria comes comes in. Um, how do I make the paint work for it? How do I paint it in an interesting way? So playing with like thick paint, thin paint, uh, transparent paint, opaque paint, and uh, mixing them all up, and um, and kind of I, I suppose what we what artists painters all do is try to make the viewer stand in front of what they're doing a little bit longer. So kind of giving um, giving the viewer some kind of I call it visual meat and potatoes to, to, to kind of chew on while, you, while you're looking at something. And you were saying how um, you kind of give the viewer clues about what what it's about if they're not sure. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a kind of... I'm very wary of uh, revealing what the, the picture is of, in inverted commas, uh, too soon. Um, because I think then there's a danger of, the, of it becoming illustrative. Um, so, you know, the viewer might think, all right, that's that, it's a picture of that, okay, next. Um, I want to kind of make the viewer work a bit harder. So the Jack the Ripper series, for instance, all of the paintings are suffixed um, with the initials of the victim. Um, so is it all quite dark subject matter or is there anything that's a bit more light-hearted? Um, yeah, it's not all dark at all. Um, it's whatever piques my interest at the time. So um, this one, uh, which is... Uh, unfinished, I, I hasten to add. It'll be much better than that. Uh, that's the site of uh, the gates to Steptoe's Yard in the um, in the 1970-something uh, films. Uh, Steptoe and Steptoe and Son Ride Again. Um, that one is uh, called Untitled Well Painting, and that's the site where um, purportedly Lord Lambton threw the worm um, in the, the Lambton's worm uh, Myth? Don't know. Don't know whether it's a myth. <laughs> <laughs> but you said there was a bit of um, kind of it, it might not be there or it might be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, the Lambton worm story: uh, a rich, arrogant landowner finds a uh, is fishing and finds it a newt-like creature. He throws it down a well. He goes after fighting the first crusade. It grows into a dragon. Um, he comes back and he slays the dragon. Uh, it's a kind of very um, abbreviated version of that of that story um, and I was kind of interested in visiting that site in making a painting of where something almost certainly didn't happen rather than where something did happen.